Hello, champion. I'm Pastor Glenn Curry, and I want you to know that there is victory in Jesus. Why did Jesus take on flesh and come to the earth? Now, I can, I can name maybe 50 things. He came to seek and save those that are lost. He came to forgiveness, for, forgive us of our sins. He came to introduce the Father. But I want to give you a couple of verses that says, for this reason, Jesus came. And I'm, I, I'm serious that I could probably write down 50 things that Jesus came to do. Why did he take on flesh? 1 John 3, 8 says, For this purpose, for this reason, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. What are the works of the devil? Sickness, disease, discouragement, hate, depression, lack, confusion, all that stuff. Are the work, those things are the works of the devil. The other translation says... Uh, undo, put an end to the works of the devil. I like that. Hebrews 4, 14 says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, since we live in the flesh, Jesus also himself likewise took part of the same so that he might know what we're going through. Walk in our shoes, you know what I'm saying? Tempted at all points like we are yet without sin. All right, Jesus took part of the same uh, so that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. I like that. I'm going to give you a few of the other translations. The American Standard Version says that he might bring to naught him that had the power of death. 20th century says that in order that by death he might render powerless him that had the power of death. Williams' translation says that he might put a stop to the power of him. The New English Bible says that uh, so that through his death he might break the power of him that had the power of death. That is the devil. I think I quoted that right. Berkeley says that he might neutralize the one. Goodspeed says in order that by his death he might dethrone him that had the power of death, that is the devil. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil and to destroy the devil personally. Uh, Rotherham, I like that, says that he might uh, per paralyze him that had the power of death. Okay. Some of the other translations says, say that in dying he might crush him, that uh, through his death he might destroy the devil that he destroyed the devil's hold on death. Uh, what are some of the other ones? Uh, that he might bring to naught, make of no effect him that had the power of death. Well, from Romans chapter 5, there's a huge contrast, contrast about what we had in Adam and in Jesus. What we had in Adam, what we had in Jesus. In Adam, all died. In Christ, all were made alive. In Adam... Uh, sin reigned over us and Satan reigned over us, but in Christ we reign in life as a king, praise God. In Adam we were condemned. In Christ we're declared not guilty. In Adam we were sinners. In Christ we're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I like that. In Adam we were foreigners and aliens to God. In Christ we're made near by the blood of Jesus. In Adam the devil was our father. Jesus told a group of he, uh, Jews you're of your father, the devil. They were bragging that Abraham was their father, and Jesus corrected them and said, your father is the devil. Well, in Christ, the living God of this universe is our father. In Adam, we had no hope. In Christ, we have obtained, already obtained. Not, it's not going to see how it turns out in the wash. We already, the, from the get-go, God gives us everlasting life. In Adam, the one who's in the world was greater than us. In Christ, greater is he that's within us than he that's in the world, 1 John 4.4. 4. So as far as you're concerned, concerned uh, the devil's been brought to naught, rendered powerless, had his power broken, neutralized, dethroned, paralyzed, crushed. All those other translations that, that I, I spoke to you earlier. So thank you, Heavenly Father, that you delivered us from the power of darkness. You've translated us into the kingdom of your dear son, Jesus Christ, Colossians 1.13. We pray the word before you. We stand on the word. I'm Pastor Glenn Curry. I encourage you to continue listening to these messages of faith and love and power and victory and praise. Praise God day by day as you can. Rehear them. Like them below. Uh, subscribe. And if you have comments, uh, make those comments. I, I normally say have a good day, but the truth is by your attitude, you either make a good day or you have a bad day. So make a good day. I'm Pastor Glenn.